You're right, Samia. Do you want to have a go at making a couple of dead simple industrial bedside lights? Here's how to do it. So the first step in making the bedside lamps is to get the walnut plane to the same thickness all the way around. I'll be using the thickness planer, but this is something you could do by hand if you're a bit more skilled with the hand plane than I am. Now that I've got the walnut plane to the same thickness all the way around, this is measuring roughly 43 millimetres, but that's not crucial, I just wanted it left as chunky as possible. Now I can move my attention to cutting the plywood back panels. I'm going to make these 10 centimetres wide by 18 centimetres long. I'm going to be using 18 mil plywood. I've set my marking gauge to 10 centimetres so I can run it along the edge of the plywood and it'll give me a 10 centimetre wide line. I'm not actually going to be using the cutting wheel for this, I'm just going to offer up my pencil to the side because it's not really a crucial measurement and it doesn't cut very well in plywood either. So now that I've got this 10 centimetre line marked, I can get it cut. Now ideally I'd be using my table saw for this, or maybe even my track saw, but it's a lot of hassle to set up, and this isn't crucial. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit tapered, as long as it looks straight to the eye, that's all that matters. So I'm going to cut it on my bandsaw instead. Now I can take both the walnut and the plywood to the chop saw and get them cut to length. Now all the pieces I'm cut, my original plan was to actually cut out a bit of a square opening in the plywood to then allow the walnut to slot through and that would be the way that I would fix it. But that's just adding on more work and it's not needed because there's not going to be a lot of weight hanging off the back of this. So instead I'm going to use dowels. So I'm going to put some 6mm dowels into the walnut. Now for alignment, before putting the dowels in, I'm going to be using some dowel centre pins. Now these are little spikes, so you drill a 6mm hole first, put the spikes in and then I'll be able to press it into place, give it a little bit of a tap and it'll give me exact marks where to drill so that the dowel should line up perfectly. So now I can offer up the block, press it in to give me a couple of marks, but to help me get it aligned properly I'm going to use a set square. Now this can come into place again this isn't crucial at all I've made myself some marks so I can get it all roughly where I need it to be and then offering up the square can just make sure that it's not twisted too badly again it's nothing that's going to do with the construction as long as it looks right by eye that's all that matters that's looking good to me so I'll remove the square now I can give it a bit of a tap should leave me a couple of dots and it's left me two indentations and that's where I need to drill and the dowels should align perfectly. These only really need one larger dowel. A 10mm or 12mm would do the job but I only had 6mm so I went with two dowels instead. If you're using one dowel it can be aligned by simply marking centres on the back panel and on the end of the walnut piece. I unfortunately lost the footage of adding the chamfers to the edges of the walnut. I did this using a 45 degree chamfer bit in the router. After sanding I could drill two 8mm holes to receive the cable later. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. If I was to make these again, I'd paint the back panel before gluing the walnut in place. I used hammered effect black paint to try and give it a metal look. I then gave it all three coats of clear lacquer. To hang the light on the wall, I used keyhole hangers. They get recessed into the back of the lights using a straight bit in the rotor and then secured in place with screws. So basically the lamp holders I'm done now, these can sit on the wall and they can be wired up. I did go ahead and wire up the lamp holder itself. 
that's just been fitted on the end. It's basically the same technique as wiring up a plug. I thought about filming it, but I didn't want to take the risk because if I did something wrong and you copied it, it could cause injury, you could be electrocuted, you could burn your house down. So I really didn't want that on my conscience. So I did this off camera. There's plenty of guides to follow online, but of course you're always best to get a qualified electrician to deal with anything when it comes to electricity. But let's get it actually added to the lamp itself now. Now I just need to wire a plug on the end. The keyhole hanger simply slides onto a screw in the wall and locks in place. So I've got the light hung in place now, but as you can see it looks a bit messy because this cable is all kinked and it's all bent and ideally I want a nice sharp straight line. So to try and get this to straighten out a bit I'm going to use a hairdryer, I'm going to put it on the hottest setting, I'm going to keep in mind I don't want the wire to get too hot, but being a hairdryer I think I shouldn't have any issues with that. I'm just going to heat the wire up a little bit, apply a bit of tension and hopefully straighten out the cable. Not perfect, but I think it looks a lot better than it did before anyway. So that's it then guys, another simple project. It's literally two blocks of wood stuck together and a hole drilled through to put a cable in. Can't get more simple than that, can ya? But I really like the design. I think it's in keeping with what I'm going for in my bedroom, that industrial, simplistic look. I think the cable really stands out on this one, especially against that walnut and the black back piece. Those could be changed round. You could use a different color for the back panel, choose a different species of wood, and of course, a different colored cable as well. And it'll suit your decor a hell of a lot better, I'm sure. I'll leave links to everything I've used in this project in the description down below and on my blog post so head on over to averagejoesjoinery.com and there'll be a step-by-step -step tutorial on there for you to follow as always I want to say a massive thank you to my patreon supporters they make projects like this possible and I can't begin to thank you all enough guys so thank you so much if you haven't subscribed to the channel already make sure you click the subscribe button and then click the little bell icon next to it so you'll get all the notifications whenever I upload a new video if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it give it a thumbs down and I'll catch you on the next one